This video will only be about the recording process and not the mixing or the effects or the auto-tune because this process is essential in making those other things work. This is the vocal that I have and it's just from my computer microphone, not even this microphone that I'm recording on right now, but the computer laptop speakers inbuilt microphone. Sounds like this. And I couldn't have had that and it would have sound it would have sounded scratchy and bad if I didn't have a great surgical recording process. So that's what this video is. So just through my computer mic, any other tips that will come from this video will obviously apply to any other setup that you have. It can only augment the rest of your recordings. I'll be showing footage of the vocals that I recorded in this session. These were just done in my basement and are going to be the tracks that you're going to hear when we start actually mixing this vocal. The first step that I do with anything, especially in Soundtrap, is export the beat that I have into a file and then make a new project to record my vocals in. If you don't do this, if you just record the vocals into the beat that you already have, most of the time when you have a lot of tracks present, you're going to get CPU issues and it'll actually corrupt your audio file sometimes. You'll record in and then if there's a slow kind of lag, even when you're recording, the beat will slow down and come back a little bit and you'll get digitally warped audio files and it's much cleaner to just export the beat and then put it back into a new project. It's also a must to have headphones on when you're recording. Literally anything will do just so you have some sound coming in so that you're on tempo and you're on pitch and everything is good. Here's where we start actually getting into things that'll change the sound of what you record. Get into a long room if you can. Take the longest room in a quiet place that you could record in. Set up lengthwise. Most rooms are not square, thank God, because the worst acoustic environment you can have is square. All of that excess noise is coming back into the microphone and really degrades the quality no matter what microphone you have. So get into a quiet room and a long room if you can. The next biggest thing that will impact what your microphone sounds like is to put acoustical treatment just around the microphone. Acoustical treatment could be anything from pillows or carpets, blankets, anything like that. But surround your microphone with it if you can. It will cut down on all of the reverberation from the room that you get and get the driest vocal that you could possibly have. As you can see here, we put two big pillows around either side of my computer, making sure to leave the microphone port which is coming out of the front of the laptop exposed so we're talking directly into the microphone and no sound is bouncing off walls and getting into the computer the next one is a very very important one and every expensive microphone setup is going to have something like this and it's a pop filter pop filters are small pieces of thin cloth maybe metal mesh or foam that goes around the microphone and it dampens sounds but not to change the quality of your voice but to cut down on what are called plosives when you have p's b's p -p sounds it cuts down on that because they're very very loud coming through the microphone so a pop filter is i don't know 15 bucks on amazon i'll leave a link down below if you want a cheap one and they're very useful and you'll stick with one forever once you get one but to make sure we have something that could be done around the house and to still get the exact same effect we took a thin undershirt and doubled it up and we sank through that to cut down on the plosive sounds it looked a little silly when chris was holding this piece of cloth up with his hands but it won't sound silly another tip that i'm gonna give right here is to solo the track if you don't want to hear yourself while you're recording this is split 50-50 from all the people I've recorded and just my personal experience with it. I don't like hearing myself do it. A lot of people, when they're recording their vocals, like to hear compression and reverb or something on their voice when they're recording. Regardless, you could unmute any track that you want to hear while you're doing it, including yourself. But for now, with Chris, because he doesn't want to hear himself when he's recording, I'm just soloing the backing track. Once you start actually recording, what I want to do is go back into the files that you have and look to see if they're clipping at all. And clipping sounds something like this. Find me, make it dinner for two. Not like this. Find me, make it dinner for two. When things are clipping like that, it gets that little buzzy effect. I don't care what system you use, what fancy equipment that you use, you can't unclip a signal. If the vocal is too loud, there's really nothing you can do but redo it. Distorted vocals, how do you fix them? Tell them to recut it. 
That's the most efficient way. If you are clipping, especially on this computer microphone, it's probably just because you're standing too close to whatever the source is. You could stand a little bit farther back. Don't go too far back. I'd say anything more than three feet away from the mic is probably going to pick up too much room noise to be usable. But we do want to talk into the microphone under that three feet range. As a general rule of thumb, I like to record three sections of any section that I'm doing, and I'll do those really independently. It's a common question, should I record the entire song all at once? Should I just do section by section? That really depends. If you think you can get it all out there, by all means, go ahead and do it. A benefit to doing separate takes is that you could take water breaks in the middle, redo your voice, try different things up, and you don't have to be under pressure when you're recording. But nevertheless, whatever works for you, just make sure that you get at first at least three takes of any section that you have in your song. That's just so you don't have mistakes and you could always make sure you have a backup of what it is. But mainly because when you're mixing, a very, very common recording technique is to double the vocals that you have. And having that option when you have three takes of something is very, very useful. And lastly, try different lengths for recording. I said earlier that over three feet probably wouldn't be a good idea for recording depth. But try it out. If there's a certain section, maybe ad-libs, that you want to get and pick up your natural room sound, that could really add something to the vocals, especially in contrast with these clean intersections that you have. Right before I end, none of this is important unless you mix it right. This is all just extraneous steps and boring and kind of discouraging if you don't know the process of it at the end. So go check out that video right now about mixing this stuff entirely in Soundtrap. I have other ones about effects and things like that, but check out that mixing video first. That's the main one. And I have a lot more to say than even that video about this stuff too. And a like and a subscribe goes a long way for a beginner channel like me. So if you want to see me keep doing this stuff, thank you very much uh, for a like and sub down below. And see you later. 19, but she know what it's